Easter is kind of like the ultimate sacrifice? To me, Easter is Jesus fulfilling God's promises from the Old Testament through his death and resurrection. Easter means that uh, it's a celebration of uh, Jesus' uh, resurrection. It's kind of like a fresh start, like you can have another go at it. It reminds me of how lucky we are that Jesus died for us. New life, new beginnings, um, good news of, of Jesus. Faith and strength and hope. God put his love on the cross. Hope, new hope, and uh, reawakening of uh, my soul. Remembering that Jesus died for us. Remembering the price that was paid. Oh, uh, well, I suppose the, the right answer is church and the resurrection. I suppose for me, uh, maybe holidays. And chocolate. Um, it's just the time we celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ. Amazing. Reflection. Cool. Enriched. Slow. Strength. Meaningful. Uncertain at times. Um, very challenging. Faithful. Hope. Unpredictable. Ongoing. Twenty million. Um, Thirty million. Sixty million. Sixty million. Oh dear, I would reckon about sixteen million, and about a quarter of them I have. <laughs> I don't know, sixteen million. I don't know. What. Millions. Seventy, eighty million. Eighty million. 100 million? 700 million. 900 million? Oh. Too many. Chocolate. Mars. Sorry. Cadbury's. Cadbury's. Uh, Cadbury's Bones. Cadbury's Cream Eggs. Cadbury's Cream Egg. Galaxy. Probably Double Backer. Uh, Malteser. Marks and Spencer's Dark Chocolate. Mint Chocolate. Chocolates with Smarties and more chocolates. Spend time with my family. To come to church and enjoy church. Uh, during Easter, because I'm off school, I like to sleep a lot. Spending time with my family and visiting the North Coast. Visit my family, come down to my church. You talk. I love um, the whole family go to the caravan and we're all together play games. It's just lovely to be with everybody. We probably come to church and spend time with the family if the weather's nice, go on a, a trip somewhere. Sleep. If I could, I would cruise. Relax. Time out with the kids, Easter egg hunts and things with the family. Good evening and welcome to our youth fellowship service on this Palm Sunday. We hope you enjoy this service and it helps to open your eyes and look at Easter story a little differently through the eyes of others. 
Uh, at this stage, I would like to invite you all into the McIntyre suite after the service for some tea and biscuits and further fellowship together. Uh, I'm sure you're all eagerly waiting to know the answer to the question from the video of how many Easter eggs do you think are sold in the UK every year is 80 million. So well done. <laughs> uh, we hope that you enjoyed our video and a big thank you to everyone who took part in it and made it possible. This year we are thinking about what does Easter mean to you? We have already heard some responses from our fellow members of Craiga. For some, it may be getting time off school or work, the excitement of going away on holiday, finally getting to indulge in those Easter eggs after 40 days of Lent. But Easter is one of the most monumental events within the Christian calendar. Jesus' death and resurrection is what brings hope to Christians all around the world. The act of Jesus dying on the cross, sacrificing himself and taking the blame for all our sins is what gives us freedom in Christ today and the chance to live eternally with God in heaven. Tonight, we think about what the events of Easter would have meant to some people at the time of Jesus. The centurion in particular, as well as Peter and Mary Magdalene, which we will hear later in our service. The centurion was a Roman officer in charge of many soldiers and took his orders from Pontius Pilate. And on this particular day, that order was to crucify this man, Jesus. He would have been very much against Jesus and his teachings. So you could imagine that this is just an everyday job for this officer. This centurion would have oversaw and directed Jesus' execution. He may have also been present at the trial and walked with him to where the cross was erected. He then stood at the bottom of Jesus' cross and mocked him while he th lay there dying. But this was no one special to the centurion. In fact, he did not like this man and it was all just part of the job. However, when the time came for Jesus to take his last breath, the centurion did not celebrate for a task successfully completed. Instead, one of the greatest conversions happened when he said, surely he really was the son of God. We are told the centurion was frightened by the events that happened. The darkness, the temple curtain being torn in two, and an earthquake. Maybe it was these acts of God, or maybe it was watching the humble way in which Jesus died, or maybe seeing how Jesus forgave those who were mocking and beating him, as he said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. We do not know a lot about this centurion, not even his name but we can learn a lot from him. A man who was raised practically worshiping the Roman emperor as a God and barely tolerating the Jews. On the day of Jesus' death, he turned his life around and believed that Jesus really was the son of God. He saw Jesus' humanity and felt his compassion firsthand as he stood beside Jesus when he died. Even from that very day that Jesus died, he had begun saving lives. So again we ask, what does Easter mean to you? So now let us stand and worship together as we sing our first two items of praise. And feel free to sit during this time if you wish. Uh, the first piece is Praise is Rising and then Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice.
Jesus appears to Mary Magdalene. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. What would Easter have meant to Mary Magdalene? Without a doubt, a feeling of joy. Her reaction of fear and sorrow upon finding the tomb empty is banished and replaced by ecstasy upon her realisation that Jesus had risen from death. The man who had saved her and cleansed her soul. It seems reasonable to suggest that it would, be, it would be an understatement to describe her as happy at the prospect. She held a desire to, to spread that joy that she was feeling and bring news of the resurrection to the disciples. She became the apostle of the apostles, a messenger bringing hope. That is what Easter really means. Hope. Hope that we are loved and hope that we will live a life free of sin thanks to Jesus who died to save us. He died to save Mary. He died to save his disciples. He, he died to save everyone, every person, every one of us in an act of true selflessness. So there's very much reason and cause to be happy like Mary Magdalene was. We cannot truly know what Easter would have meant to her. But there are, I think, two universal lessons that we can take from what the Bible tells us. Do not take your friends for granted. Easter is a time for friendship. As Mary ran to spread the news that Jesus had woken from the tomb. The one that she and the other disciples followed with such admiration had died for them and should not be left and therefore should not be left by them. They should continue to follow him their friend. And the other lesson, you always have a second chance. Easter is a time to try again. As Jesus saved Mary from the devil and died to save the world, the world from its sins. Don't live life in a way that means you'll need a second chance because your actions have a cost. But know that forgiveness is essential and must be given. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here together this evening and for helping us through the past week. We are grateful that when times are rough, you are beside us as a constant reminder that you are mighty and have great things planned for us. We are sorry that we don't appreciate everything you do for, for us, from the bigger things such as exam results and new opportunities to the little things like the smell of your favourite char gel or the taste of fresh baked bread. We admit that we don't always say or do the right thing, but we ask that you guide us to whatever is right, knowing that you, in your mercy, will forgive us. We praise you for giving your all for us and helping each and every one of us in such a powerful and moving way. I ask that you bless this congregation this evening and assist them in their daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Jesus predicts the betrayal of Peter. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, This very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. The denial of Jesus is a monumental part of the Easter story, as it shows how easy it is for Christians to dismiss their faith, just like the way Peter did. Peter felt he could face the backlash and persecution of following Jesus, but under pressure it led him astray from what he had promised Jesus, just like what many Christians may face. We can learn from Peter that when we face pressure, we may feel weak in the moment, but we must be strong to our faith and understand the consequences of our actions. Like Peter, we can learn to be forgiven and given the opportunity to follow Jesus. For Peter, Easter offered him a feeling of hope, joy and peace. The resurrection of Jesus was important for Peter's understanding of the word of God, as in his heart he knew he could trust the word of God, and he no longer doubted the word of his leader, his friend Jesus. Jesus wanted Peter to personally know he was forgiven for his sins. His sin was no more, as Jesus had paid for it. After the resurrection of Jesus, Peter spread the word of God, and shared the story of Jesus, creating a fellowship of disciples. We will now join to sing Christ Alone Cornerstone.
Ladies and gentlemen, over the past few years, there have been some major changes around the world in politics, for example, but we won't talk about those. There are bigger issues like the growing gaps between Toblerone spaces or the continuing variation in the Quality Streets box. But even bigger than that, huge changes here in Crego. As Michael Graham has taken to the stage of Clerk of Session. Michael, would you like to come up here and we'll have a wee chat with you? Give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. So, Michael, how are you? We're on, we're working. Yeah. Working? Yes, That's always a good uh, start, isn't it? I'm good, thanks. Good, good. <laughs> Bit nervous. Yeah, well, it's not every day you meet Craig as answer to Alton Deck. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure this was intended as a compliment. Yeah, of course. Well, sure, we're just going to ask you a few wee questions here, Michael. Uh, yes. Don't feel any pressure. We'll start with a... We'll start with a... Uh, we'll start with a question <laughs> of sorts. Where were you born and brought up? Born in Belfast. Uh, brought up in East Belfast, off the Sandown Road, a place called Rich Hill Park, and that's where I spent my time up until I was about 16 years of age. And what school did you go to? I started off, my first school was Cairns Hill Primary School, I went there for one year, and then we moved house, we moved to Rich Hill Park then. I went to a school in Clarewood Estate called Robert Bell Primary School, it's not there anymore, it just shows you what age I am. <laughs> And then I went to uh, Grosvenor High School after that. And so, what do you like to do in your spare time, Michael? What are your hobbies? Oh, spare time. <laughs> What's that? No, spare time, uh, I like to uh, uh, have an interest in gardening. I have a greenhouse there, it takes up a lot of my time. I like to go to football matches. Uh, I have three grandchildren, I take up a lot of time too. So, uh, Getting all those things done, that's, that's most of the time taken, yeah. What is your favourite piece of music or genre? Hmm, difficult question because it's something that will probably change on a daily basis, to be honest with you. I like anything, any type of music, to be honest, anything from Beethoven to the Beatles, really. Uh, changes day to day. Always good to have a bold taste. But let's, let's bring it back into church a little bit. What's your favourite hymn? Favourite hymn? would be How Great Thou Art. It was a, a family favourite, it was a favourite of my father's and uh, it was one that uh, I don't know if many of you remember what were called 8-track cassettes. Dad had one of these fitted in his car and that was a track that he was usually playing when he was leaving us to school or picking us up from youth clubs and stuff. So uh, yeah, How Great Thou Art. It's a nice easy question, what's your favourite colour? Blue. <laughs> and uh, we've talked about your spare time a little bit, uh, but would you rather see a movie or read the book? So if there's a film, say for example, Pride and Prejudice, would you rather see that film or read the book? Rather read the book. I think it's more personal, yeah. and I don't think you can replicate that what you get out of a book by reading it, I don't think you can replicate that in film. So it would always be reading a book, more personal. Do you have a favourite book? Yeah, uh, a favourite author would be, he's a Welsh author, Ken Follett. And uh, there was a trilogy of books, uh, The uh, Pillars of the Earth. Um, it, it was all to do, the, the, the books were from the 12th up to the 15th century. And uh, it was in around the uh, construction of a cathedral uh, in England and all the problems that went with that. And it was at a time when there was a lot of feuding, etc., going on. So uh, that would be the favourite book, yeah. Do you have a favourite movie? Not a great one for movies. Not a great one for movies as they are now, I suppose. Black and white movies are a thing for me, to be honest with you. Um, I liked old westerns. I liked. Uh, the old Sherlock Holmes films are Basil Rathbone, if you remember him, which definitely showing me age now. And uh, one of my favourite films would probably be, it was 1951, uh, a science fiction classic called uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still. 
and Michael Rennie was the uh, the lead actor in that, and that was about uh, it's about it's a bit of a spoiler alert for any of you who haven't seen it here, by the way. So if you don't want to know about it. No, it's about a, a UFO landing in the state of Washington, and it's there the inhabitants of this UFO, Michael Rennie and a, and a robot, are there for to uh, speak to the world leaders to advise them that if they can't stop their quarrelling, they can't stop their fighting and their threat of nuclear war, etc., on Earth, that Earth will be destroyed as it poses a, a threat to other planets in the solar system. Bit boring, was it? Yeah. <laughs> I won't say anything like that. Uh, would you, and so on that theme of films, would you rather go to the cinema or would you stay at home and watch the TV? The only time I really go to the cinema now is if I'm taking grandchildren to it. Uh, and that's usually to watch films that I don't really want to be there to watch. <laughs> so, uh, no, uh, and at home, television isn't, isn't really a big thing for me, unless there's sport on. That's the only thing I would really watch on television. Again, quite boring. Do you ever have tea or coffee? One cup of coffee in the day, and the rest of it's tea. And sweets or chocolate? Oh, no real preference, to be honest. Neither really do anything for me. But I suppose if you ask me to pick... It would be sweets. Robert yeah. McNair usually carries a nice selection. On it. <laughs> Any particular favourite kind of sweet, Michael? Any kind of sweet, whatever Robert has in his pocket at the time. <laughs> um, red sauce or brown sauce? Oh, right. Well, that would depend what you're eating. Okay, fish supper with denison, red sauce. Uh, cooked breakfast, brown sauce. And... Uh, salt and vinegar or cheese and onion, or in general, what's your favourite flavour of cheese? Cheese and onion. Cheese and onion. And the reason's quite simple. My sister-in-law worked in the potato factory in Tandragee, and every Christmas for a Christmas box, I got a box of cheese and onion crisps. <laughs> so, cheese and onion. Fair enough. Fair enough. Marmite, yes or no? A definite no. <laughs> and... Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Controversial, no, isn't it? No, pineapple's just one of those things I don't like. Pineapple and prawns, two things. If I ever go to your house and you're making some food, pineapple and prawns are off the menu. In general, the right yeah. answer, ladies and gentlemen. Thank so you. no to pineapple on pizza. Pineapple. Pineapple with nothing. Is that no. not what they're on Definitely about? not on pizza. Pineapple on pizza, don't want no. to um, Chocolate or vanilla ice cream, or whatever you like. Favourite ice cream would actually be honeycomb. And so, uh, in terms of sport, you've already said that you're a fan of the sport, Michael. United or City? Oh. <laughs> United or City, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, well, I think anyone that knows me knows that I'm, I'm United, Manchester United all the time. But, Listen, they're not doing as well as I'd <laughs> like them to do at times there. So <clears throat> I'm going to be quite controversial, and I could lose a lot of friends here who are United people and say that I don't actually mind if Manchester City win the league is here because it means that... <laughs> no, don't get carried away, Nigel. No. It means that Liverpool don't win it. And if Liverpool win it, I have got... <laughs> Maggie Hamilton to contend with, <laughs> that just does not bear thinking about. Um, would you prefer sun or snow? Uh, sun every time, yeah. Snow, don't like driving in the snow, There's too many chances of falling, having accidents, etc. So sun, yeah. And if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you want to go? An easy enough one, and it's a place I've never been before. It's actually Canada. Uh, and the reason is, um, I had a great aunt, great aunt Ruby, who Ruby granddaughter is named after, uh, my grandmother's sister, and she moved to uh, Toronto in Canada when she was 18 years of age and going back quite a bit. But she set up a law firm in Toronto, and uh, she, when she was over visiting family one time, she happened to mention to mum and dad, it was at the height of the troubles, and she mentioned to mum and dad that uh, if they liked, she would take my brother and I to Canada to live with her, to get us educated, and we would get a place in, in the firm when we grew up. Uh, and uh, much to mum and dad's disbelief, I was all for it. I was okay about that. But uh, mum and dad weren't having any of it. 
But it's a place I would like, for those reasons, I would like to go and see, and I've never been before. What iron could you not live without? Radio. In particular, digital radio. Uh, uh, be, uh, I would listen to the radio probably 24 hours a day. Uh, I listen, and my wife will even tell you at night time there, I have earphones in, and go to bed at night, listen to radio, so. What a sad life I lead. <laughs> For the music or for any of this, like the dramas? Pardon? For the music or for the dramas? And the for the stories? dramas? For, for the, the dramas. dramas? No, not for the music, for the dramas, yeah. BBC Radio 4 guy? Radio 4 Extra. Oh. If ever you want to tune in, I can recommend it. <laughs> and what about phobias? Do you have any fears, Michael? I wouldn't say that it's a fear, but I'm not, I wouldn't be 100% comfortable about flying. That would be about the only thing. There's just something about being up there and not having control. And any amount of things can go wrong. And if you see somebody twitching beside you, it's stuff that just can do without that. What's the best piece of advice you've ever given? The best piece of advice I've given? I don't think I've ever given anybody good <laughs> advice, to be honest with you. I can tell you about advice that I've been given um, in, in my working days. and. Uh, I was in the back of a Land Rover, all complaining about having to work long hours and this, that, and the other. Uh, one of the guys said, you know, you really need to stop complaining about having these troubles in your life, these so-called troubles in your life, you know, and be a bit more thankful for maybe the troubles that you don't have. Um, uh, and I suppose in many ways, what he's saying to you is, you know, like a bad day for me is probably equates with somebody else having really quite a good day, so look at things from that perspective. And do you have a favourite book in the Bible or a favourite Bible verse? Bible verse? Bible verse. And why would that be? Why would that be your favourite? Y yeah, uh, Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? And it's one that... Um, it was actually it was it was a, a minister I, where I live in Money Ray. There's a, a church across the road from me, and it was a, a minister there uh, when we first moved in. A, a minister called uh, William Frame, elderly gentleman. He, he went into the ministry late in life, and uh, early on in my career, I, I had an injury, which uh, ended, I ended up in the hospital for quite a while with it. And he came to visit me and he read to me from that and it always stuck with me. I just liked the words because I suppose um, when you think about it, uh, the Lord, he, he is your light, he is your salvation, he's uh, your strength, your protector and the love and the care that he gives us, you know, it, it overshadows anything that you can get uh, in a human bond. So. When did he join Craig? 1981. My wife and I were married in September 1981 and prior just to getting married we made a conscious decision to join one of the local churches. So the, uh, the first church, we were living up in Beach Grove Park at the time. The first church that we came to was actually Craig a Church and I remember it was Bob Montgomery was clerk of session at that stage. Good clerk of session, Bob Montgomery. Yeah, no, Bob was clerk of session, and uh, no, we got a really nice welcome on the door. And one of the persons, uh, people really responsible for us coming to church, believe it or not, she might know this herself, was Beth McNair. Beth called out at the house on a few occasions, and it was really, you've got Beth to thank for me being here, so blame it on her. And have you always been a church goer? No, I have to be honest and say, I was, I was, before I came to Craig, I was Church of Ireland, St. Jude's uh, Church of Ireland on the Armour Road. But uh, when I left school at 16, I started work. Between the ages of 16 and 20, I don't think I was through the door of a church at all. It was only when I met Anne uh, that uh, I came back into church again. And it wasn't Church of Ireland, as you can see. So. And a last question, what does Easter mean to you? Well, you've heard it mentioned on the video there, you know, it's to celebrate Easter is to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And to me, that's one of the most important events in history. Um, 
I think uh, it's a time to reflect on the sacrifice that the Jesus Christ made for us, um, the pain and the suffering that he endured for us. So that's really what Easter sums up for me. Thank you very much, Michael, for answering those questions. We hope that you've learned a little bit more about this wonderful gentleman who we are now privileged and I'm very sure thankful to replace Denison as our clerk of session. Big footsteps to follow in, Michael. I think that's clerk of session day is over. <laughs> that's it then, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for answering those questions. Ladies and gentlemen, give him a big round of applause. Michael Graham. Let us pray. Dear God, as we think about the world, we pray for the flood hit areas of Iran and Africa where people are left homeless and their family and friends are missing. We pray for those affected by conflicts such as Libya as they are caught up in political uncertainty. We also pray for our own country and hope that the div divides that us amidst the political confusion and fear we will not cause us hatred and that those divisions will heal. We ask that you let us know your love is there when all we seem to see is negativities. In your name we pray, Amen. We are now going to collect your offering.
us pray. Dear Lord, may we present this offering to you on behalf of everyone here tonight. We give you this to help our church and to further your kingdom here on earth. We also ask that you settle our anxieties as we lift whatever is in our hearts to you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Now let us join together in our closing time of praise. Again, feel free to stand or sit. We will now sing, There is a Higher Throne, followed straight after by How Deep the Father's Love for Us.
now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.